It's time to test our server. We'll test the server in our network, and then we'll see how the server does with our wired devices and our mobile devices. This is DIY Home Server 2022. In this third part of this three-part series, we're gonna put our home network and our newly built server to the test to make sure we're happy with the speed. Along the way, I'll show you how to connect to your new home server and things to look out for that can affect the performance of the server. If you missed the first part of the series where I built this server, you can click this link here. In the second part of the series, I installed and configured the server, and you can click the link here to get all caught up. Let's go! Here's a list of all the tests we're going to run. Let's start out with a quick test on our server. To perform this test, I'm going to log in via SSH on my Windows 10 computer. The test we're going to perform will give us an idea of the read speeds of each drive. Login is the administrator to perform these commands with the following command. As we did in the previous video, we're going to run this command to get the list of all the hard drives on our system. Let's install a small program called HDParm. This program will let us test our hard drives by typing this command. Now, let's run this command on each drive on our system to see the performance each drive will give us. The first test will be our two MaxTor drives. For this drive, we can see that we're getting around 60 megabytes per second. Let's run a test on the next drive, which is the other identical MaxTor drive. The speed is the same as the other MaxTor drive, 60 megabytes per second. The next drive is the 150 gigabyte Hitachi laptop drive. This is our slowest drive in the array at around 45 megabytes per second. Our next drive is the system drive, the WD Velociraptor drive. As you can see, this is our fastest drive, which is why I set it up as the system drive. We're at around 118 megabytes per second for this one. Our final drive is the 200 gigabyte Seagate drive. This one's also at about 60 megabytes, similar to the other two MaxTor drives. From this quick test, we can see that when we access files from this server, we can expect speeds ranging between 45 megabytes per second and up to 120 megabytes per second. My gigabit network can handle that range without issue and is acceptable for my purposes here at home. Since I've configured all these drives together, it's difficult to test the write speeds. We'll test the write speeds later in the video when we test the server with our devices. Before we log out of the server, I want to feature a great tool for monitoring hard drive activity, which we talked about in the last video. IOTOP is a small application that lets us monitor the read and write activity on our server. To start the program, type in the following command. Once the app is loaded, you can hit the O key to see all the active transfers. I'm currently transferring a file to the server so we can monitor the activity and see the hard drive speeds. I find this tool to be helpful for general monitoring as well as troubleshooting. With this quick internal test out of the way, let's now test our home network. Let's start with our wired connections. To test this connection, I'm going to use one of the desktop computers in my house and I'm going to wire in one of my laptops to the network. Both of these computers are powerful and have fast NVMe hard drives and can both easily hit the gigabit speeds. We'll open up the activity monitor so we can monitor the speed. Now I'm going to mount a share from my Windows desktop and copy a file. As we can see here, our network is performing at gigabit speeds. Now let's move on to test our wireless network to see what kind of speeds we can expect there. I'm going to take my Mac laptop and disconnect it from the network and make sure it's connected to my wireless network. This MacBook Pro is an early 2015 model, so it's got some years on it. Despite its age, it performs well and has a great wireless card for us to get an idea of the performance of our wireless network. I'll mount the share on my Windows computer again and copy over a file. My wireless network using this Mac is giving me around 50 megabytes per second, which is perfectly acceptable for me. For this test, I'm sitting right here next to the wireless router, so the further away I get, the lower the speed will be. The location of my Wi-Fi is central to my house, so I can expect good speeds in any part of the house. With our network test out of the way, let's begin testing our server with our devices. Our first test is going to be on one of my Windows 10 desktop computers, which is wired into my home network. To connect to the server, we're going to open up an Explorer window and type in the address to our server. Windows will then prompt us to enter our credentials to access the server. Enter the credentials you created during the Samba configuration in the previous video. Windows will then show you the share we created in the configuration. Double click to open the share and you'll see a folder called Lost and Found. 
This is a standard system folder Debian creates. Since our server is nearly built, there's nothing on it, so let's copy a file to the server. We're getting a full gigabit speed, and then we see a drop off to 60 megabytes per second. Impressive for this little server. The full gigabit speeds indicate the files probably copying to our WD Velociraptor drive. Now let's see what the read speeds are from the server to our Windows desktop. The speeds are 60 megabytes per second at the beginning and then go up to 100 megabytes per second. Now let's test out the MacBook Pro with the server. Let's log into the server by hitting Command K which will open up a window for us to connect to the server. Type in the server address in the following format to connect. It will prompt you to enter your credentials and then hit OK. Next, it will show you the share on the server. Double click on the share and you'll see the file we just copied over from the Windows 10 computer. First, let's copy the file from the server. Not bad, just like our initial network test, we're seeing 60 megabytes per second. Now that the file transfer is complete, let's rename the file and copy the same file back to the server. The speeds are slower going back, but still good at 45 megabytes per second. I'm very happy with this test. This is plenty fast for me to store and pull files from the server when needed. Now let's do a test on one of my Android tablets, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3. Although tablets have come a long way in terms of performance, they're still limited by their mobile OS and the energy and power constraints of the ARM architecture. To connect to our server, I'm going to use FX Explorer, one of my preferred apps. But there are several other apps on Android that can help you connect to Windows shares. For this app, you'll need to buy the FX Explorer upgrade to allow for connections to Windows shares. On the home screen, go to the network option and hit the plus sign at the bottom. From there, select the Windows host option and on the next screen, fill out the IP address at the top, label the connection, I'll put in Spiron, and put in your username. I usually leave the option to ask me for the password each time. Select the red check mark at the bottom and it will take you back to the main network screen. On this screen, select the server connection we just configured and enter the password and select OK. We are now presented with our share. Select the share and you'll see the files that we've recently copied onto the server. To start the transfer, select and hold the file you want to copy. It then presents you with the option to cut or copy. Select and copy at the top of the screen and go back to the FX Explorer Home. Next, select the download folder on the tablet. At the top of the screen, select the small box and hit paste. Okay, so to begin, I'm seeing speeds of 10 megabytes per second and slowly ramping up to a peak of 14 megabytes per second. Not super fast, but sufficiently fast to stream a video to this tablet or for smaller files. Now that the file is completed transferring, let's rename it and copy it back to the server. This is interesting. The speed going back to the server is actually slower. We're getting around eight megabytes per second. Keep in mind, we know that the server is capable of serving this file at full gigabit speeds, but due to the limitations of this tablet, we're only able to get 14 megabytes per second. Now let's go over to an old iPhone 7 Plus I have here at my house running iOS 15. On iOS, I'm gonna use ES File Explorer, and just like Android, there are several other apps that are able to connect to Windows shares. Once installed, open the app and navigate over to services. On the services window, select the plus sign on the bottom right of the screen. On the next screen, select SMB. In the URL field, type in the IP address for the server. You can leave the port number 445. Where it says account, type in your username, and below that, type in your password. In the title field, type in what you would like to name this entry, and click connect on the upper right hand corner. It will then open up the server and present you with the share. Select the share and we can see all the files on our server. Let's begin by copying one of the files to the phone. To select the file, touch and hold the file for a second. You'll then see a blue check mark next to the file. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see some options. Select copy and it will take you to a screen where you can select where on the phone you'd like to copy the file. I'm gonna select my files and then select copy at the bottom of the screen. We can see that the speed is very impressive and much faster than the Android tablet. 
In my experience, I've noticed that networking performance is much better on iOS devices than Android. Now, let's rename the file and copy it back to the server. At the bottom of the screen, go to My Files, select the three little dots at the end of the file, and select Rename. Modify the name by at least one character and select OK. Select the three dots again, but this time select Copy. On the next screen, select the server from the list. Select the share on the next screen and hit Copy at the bottom of the screen. Just like the Android tablet, we see that our speeds are slower copying back to the server, with our speeds topping out at about 30 megabytes per second. Once again, the limitations of this phone limit the performance that we're able to get from the server. Putting it in perspective, these speeds are excellent and sufficient to comfortably stream a 4K video file from the server. That concludes our testing. So as you can see, this server is capable of keeping up with the demands of the fastest and most modern computers, but is limited by the speed and power of the device that's accessing it. Very impressive for a 15-year-old computer that you could buy on eBay or at your local thrift shop for very little. It's possible that you might have a computer like this and several old parts laying around that you could put together and make a home server. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this series. If you have any questions, please comment below. I would be happy to help you work through any difficulties you might be having. If you missed the first and second parts, you can click on the link in the middle of the screen and it will take you to a playlist with all three parts. Now, gently press that subscribe button, we'd really appreciate it.